Hi, I'm Harold Gutman with Steve Wiseman, and welcome to Game Day, Duke and UNC edition. Uh, Duke 3-0 for the first time since 1994, after blowing out Kansas on Saturday, while UNC had the bye so they could watch from their own apartments as uh, East Carolina went up to Blacksburg and beat Virginia Tech, uh, East Carolina UNC's next opponent. Uh, before we get to that game, we'll, let's, let's look back at the Duke-Kansas game for a minute. And obviously, the big, the big story was the running back setting a, a record. Steve, what can you tell us yeah, about that? Yeah, Sean Wilson is somebody that the coaching staff talked about from the time he arrived on campus, that, that he was somebody who was going to play as a true freshman. Obviously, nobody predicted he would set the single-game rushing record yeah. uh, three games in, but he, he's somebody who's, who's shifty, he has great breakaway speed, and more importantly, he has uh, quick speed um, right off the line. Like in, in short spaces, he's able to get through the hole quicker than anybody else on the team and get into the secondary and then have the breakaway speed from there. So it looks like he's set up to have a tremendous career here. Um, what will be interesting to watch uh, as we go into the game against Tulane is if he'll get more carries or if they'll keep sharing the ball like they like to do with Shaq Powell, Josh Sneed, and Joe Ajibi. Uh The initial indication is, yes, they will uh, keep sharing the ball because they'd like to keep everybody fresh. Okay. At the same time, Cutcliffe admits that Sean is a special running back unlike the other guys and that he deserves to get the ball more. Little. So we'll watch to see how that goes. Yeah, it's interesting. There's something similar going on with UNC where Elijah Hood, a true freshman, uh, came in, played right away, and he's kind of splitting carries with they have four guys kind of in a rotation right now. Although they cut one of the guys out against San Diego State, Chris Francis didn't get any carries. They went from four to three. So it's interesting to see if, if they weed that down going forward. Oh, let's talk about this Saturday. Uh, North Carolina's going down to Greenville to play East Carolina. Uh, you know, the thing I'm going to be looking out for the most is the matchup between UNC secondary and East Carolina's passing game. Uh, that was kind of the story last year. Obviously, you guys have Anthony Boone and Jameson Crowder over at Duke, one of the top quarterback-receiver combinations. Uh, out there. Well, ECU has, you know, they'll put their guys up with Cardin and Hardy up against anyone, yeah. uh, certainly in the state, if not the country. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see what UNC is able to do. Last year, ECU with 55 points, 600 yards. I mean, these are 100 plays. These are numbers that have kind of been etched in UNC's minds uh, ever since that happened at Keenan last year. Uh, so we'll see what happens uh, as far as that was with also Trey Boston and Jabari Price, two guys at UNC secondary last year who are now on NFL rosters. Uh, so we'll see what this young secondary can do if they can kind of change, change it at all this year. Uh, Early indications, you know, it's hard to say because San Diego State, the one game where UNC had, had their entire secondary back, uh, they gained 500 yards, but the cornerbacks did come up with three interceptions. Obviously, Brian Walker took one back 100 yards. Tim Scott had the game-saving one in the end zone. So, again, it, it's kind of hard to see which, which way it'll go. Uh, so that, that's what I'll be looking for. See, what are you going to be looking for when Tulane comes to Duke on Saturday? Duke's played three games this year and has not committed a turnover. Uh, they're the only team in the country, Division One, that's played three games and hasn't turned the ball over. Now... The three teams they've played aren't very good, as their record shows, but still it's a pretty big accomplishment. Tulane, in their three games, has forced eight turnovers. So something's got to give here, I think. I mean, obviously Duke's going to turn the ball over at some point. Uh, they don't want to start doing it against a Tulane team that they should beat at home to be 4-0 going into the ACC play. So um, Anthony Boone has been better about not putting the ball in jeopardy. He still has on a few occasions. In the first half against Kansas, he was pretty inaccurate, and then he was better in the second half. 11 out of 13 in the second half. So um, just because they haven't turned the ball over doesn't mean he's been perfect. And so there is work to do there. Okay, well, there you go. Duke Coast Tulane, UNC going on East Carolina. I will be here next week to talk about it. Thank you guys so much for watching Game Day.